How's it going, guys? Just before we start today's episode, I just want to say a massive thank you for being here, for tuning in and having a listen, having a watch to the show. Truly makes a massive difference. And I just know you're going to come away from here with something just really good from this episode. However, I just want to say quickly that over the last couple of years doing this podcast, we have gone from zero to a hundred in this podcast with just the quality the editing the guest range and that's been made possible by the amazing subscriber base who have just hit that subscribe button and just supported me on this journey and i'm going to ask you if you could do the same today if you enjoy this episode please make sure to hit that subscribe button or follow if you're on audio only it truly makes more of a difference than you could ever imagine and honestly just every subscriber that goes into that number It just contributes more to getting better and better guests on the show. So if you could just hit that subscribe button, or if you've already done that, maybe give it a share around or leave a rating and a review. It truly makes a massive difference to getting the show to the the true vision I have for it. So guys, without further ado, let's get over to the episode and enjoy. Cheers. How's it going, guys? Welcome to episode 109 of Talk 4, the quickfire podcast where we ask four great questions to unique and interesting people. Behind the mic today is your host, Louis Scoopian. That's me. Let me introduce our very special guest for today, someone I've uh, got a lot of deep admiration for, someone whose music I really, really enjoy, Sean McGee, who's going to be answering some questions today. So, Sean, how are you doing today, my brother? And welcome to the show, dude. Thank you very much. Really glad to be here. Um, thanks very much for having me, Louis. And I'm really looking forward to the chat. It's my first ever podcast, so thank you very much for having me on. Is it podcast debut as well? I mean, look, yeah. dude, we've um, yeah, we, we've got a few milestones then that we've uh, we've hit for this one. So tipping it up to yeah. Nancy, your song <laughs> just hit a million on Spotify. You've got your first podcast here today, and I'm um, proud to be the the host of that podcast. But yeah, just so we can get everyone on the the same page of everything uh kind of 30 to 60 seconds or so elevator pitch style just who you are man what your day job is and a little kind of intro into the life of sean mcgee if you don't mind no problem yes yeah, so i'm a, an irish musician from um, up north of ireland a little place called enniskillen in county fermanagh um so i started playing music from when i was a, a child my dad uh, connor mcgee he played music his whole life um, he was in bands from with his brother John McGee from they were children as well. So music's always been in, in my family and especially Irish traditional music would have been a big influence in my life. Um, so I started probably started in primary school uh, the pin whistle as uh, we all would, would play tin whistle in primary school and uh, I progressed at around I'm gonna say seven, eight years of age to the the fiddle or the violin. Um, so it, which is remains my main instrument. Um, so I played that from when I was seven. I played all the competitions. Uh, back here in Ireland, there's a, a competition called the FLA, and you start off in your county. If you win that, you get to go up to your province. And if you win that, it's, it's uh, the the main competition is the All Ireland FLA. So uh, luckily, that's well, that's Ireland, England, Scotland, Wales, America, Canada, and I was lucky enough to win that in. Oh, a long time ago now. I was 14 at the time, so I think it was 2008. And um, after that, I got to progress into doing uh, violin, fiddle, albums. And I just began then to start to, I thought to myself, I, I need to start singing. I never really sang until I was around 18. So I uh, started that off and, and here I am. I played all over the world, thank God, and things seem to be going going pretty smoothly. They certainly do, dude. And yeah, so, you know, the first question tends to usually be around the backstory and stuff. So, yeah, we've got got a little bit of insight into that there then. So obviously you said, you know, the instruments and stuff, but I think what's really interesting is, you know, nowadays where, um, actually, how let's start with this. How old are you right now, man? How old are you? I am 29. Okay, cool. 
<laughs> so I mean, yeah, I'm I'm 21, but you know, we're we're young dudes, and we're in this kind of like culture now where we've got the whole the Spotify thing, we've got the Apple Music stuff, and it's less kind of like CD, less vinyl stuff, and it's gone more into this kind of very saturated market. So, going into music professionally, what was that pathway like for you then? And um, was it was it tough? How did you kind of get started with it? And um, and when did it pick up? Like, when was that decision for you between like kind of day job maybe and going down the professional music route? Where was that for you? Yeah, I suppose. Uh, well, I, I had always been gigging with my with my father. Um, I started off gigging with him at ten years of age. Every usually every Saturday night, I was still in school obviously at the time. So uh, when I moved into secondary school, we it started to pick up a little bit, and we were gigging maybe on a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I was going into school on a Monday morning, just wrecked tired. <laughs> um, so that that was happening for a, lo- a long time and my whole family, my younger brother Jamie McGee is an accordion player and my younger sister Ellie Rose is a singer. So we formed a band called the McGee Family Band and we, we gigged up until I was around maybe 20. When I was in university then I met a, a guy called Gus and we hit it off as best mates in university. He taught me a lot about recording and um, different different styles of music as well that I was I would play in fiddle along with them. Uh, we had a little band, so he was we were traveling back and forward to England. But I just remember at the, at the days I was traveling over to England to play with them, and I had zero money, and it was actually costing me money to go and gig. So at that point, I wasn't enjoying my, the university course up in Belfast. I wasn't enjoying it either. I I loved the. The atmosphere and university and the fun and the, the people were well, just the, the course it just wasn't for me. Um so I decided after about a year and a half to pack that in and I thought I'm just gonna go for this. So I, I'd say at that time I was around 21 and I just thought I'm just gonna go for this in the music. And I remember my dad was happy. He just says whatever you want to do, you do it. Um mum was a little bit more tricky. She didn't want me to leave but she just said to me, if, if you're going to do this, you need to do it properly. You know, there's no jumping from gig to gig, being a, a bit of a bum, you know. <laughs> she says, you need to do this properly. So uh, I, I I took her advice, I've done it properly. And, you know, it was a lot, a lot of hard work um, to where I am now. We've, I remember back in them days, gigging four, five, six, seven days a week. Some of the days I was gigging two or three gigs a day. And it was, it took its toll on my voice as well. We're doing that many gigs, but at the same time, I learned a lot. Um, I met a lot of people, and there was, there was a, a guy I used to gig with in 2000, and I think it was just before COVID, so probably end of 2018, 2019, a guy called Rory Gallagher. Um, he's not the, the rock guitar player, Rory Gallagher, that everyone might have heard of before. Just um, he, he, His stage name is Rory in the Island. So some of your listeners might have heard of him in Lanzarote. If, if they've ever traveled over there, he had a, a music venue. But um, I met him and we went on tour for a year and toured all over the world in America, Germany. Uh, we were in Vegas for a week, um, just England, Scotland, all over the place. And I met a lot of people and learned a lot of stuff, you know. So uh, I kind of took that on board with my solo career as well. And it's, it's been, uh, been great. Yeah, absolutely, man. And you, you've obviously had a, a hell of a career. And it's, uh, I mean, I'd, I'd like to say it's probably the tip of the iceberg right now in terms of it's just coming into fruition, all of this. I yeah. mean, you've clearly hit the, uh, you know, you clearly hit the, uh, the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow <laughs> it's pretty, pretty Irish stuff, but with the, the new song, man. So tipping it up to Nancy then. So I, I'll tell you a little story. So I was, um, I was heading out to Belfast actually, um, Oh God, when was this? It was December of 2023 and I was going to see my friends, the High Kings and uh, and see one of their gigs and, and hang out for a bit. We had a great time and kind of, you know, get into the mood and everything before the concert and stuff before we left for the uh, before we left for Belfast. And we we're kind of going through Irish music and um, just on Spotify, you know, when it just plays its own thing, you know, not not on a particular playlist yeah. or anything. It just does its own thing. Your song comes on, tipping it up to Nancy, and immediately, immediately, I was just like, "Wow, this is this is really good. This is totally my vibe. Loved it." So I saved it straight away, got it on my own phone as well, and it just seems like since then it's just picked up. And I mean, it's such a catchy song, so it's obviously done so well. 
I want to get your uh, get your thoughts on it then. So obviously just hit a million on Spotify. Huge congrats, dude. But tell, tell us a bit about the song, producing that, and just kind of give us your thoughts on why you think that's doing so well and why it ended up on my uh, on my Explore page, and I'm glad it did. Yeah, well, um, I suppose well, how it all came about was um, I, I heard the song of when I was a child. It's a, it's a really old Irish song. Um, it would be a bit of a slower... Originally, it's it's a bit of a slower song, so I just thought with my, I tried, I needed to be, what's the word, um, a bit unique, and I suppose my fiddle playing, uh, I wanted to bring that into the song as well, so um, the tune that's played throughout the, the song is a, a tune, an Irish tune called the Cash Jig, so I mashed two together, so it's like two verses, and then a fiddle tune, two more verses, fiddle tune, so I thought it was a great idea, and as you say, it's a very catchy song, so um. I just think that's why it's hook off on Spotify is uh, especially too a lot of um, parents have been sending their little children the, mm -hmm. they could be only one or two years of age up in front of the TV like dancing along it seems to be just a catchy a catchy song so I think to be honest I just think it was a, a stroke of luck that it was a, a great song and um, I recorded it with a boy called Jonathan Holmes who's an absolute genius um, I'd say luckily I play a, a, quite a, a number of instruments so I could actually do all the the instrument recording myself and he played some piano along with that so um it was a really quick process I think I was in the studio for the song three times uh, maybe an hour an hour and a half each time you know and he just he could nearly edit it as we go along so it's, it's very quick that's why I hate being in the studio for it was taken all day you kind of lose the you lose the momentum of the song as well and you kind of get too much into it so I like to keep things simple and I think that's why it works because it is quite simple um, and we've just finished a recording of a new song as well. It's pretty similar vibe, so hope, hoping it's on your, your playlist next. <laughs> <laughs> nice, dude. When, when's it coming yeah. out? What, what's, what's the plan for, there, for it? Well, we were hoping, we are planning to try get it out for St. Patrick's Day, but just things have been just really, really busy. So, And then I didn't want to rush it. Um, we're probably thinking it, it's pretty much... A summer tune, so probably it at the way it looks now is going to be probably May, and then it'll bring it us bring us into the summertime. Then, so uh, it's a really good. To, to be honest, I think it's better than tipping it up to Nancy. So I'm hoping the listeners think the same. <laughs> Man, yeah, you're setting the bar high with that one. Then I like <laughs> it. I like I like the vibes. Um, yeah. <laughs> what's um? I, I find it really interesting because you know me among a load of other people, I absolutely love. Irish music it's it's you know it get, gets to my soul I just I just love it and so that song really for me was a was a big hit and it's interesting because the Irish music and stuff and you spoke about this a little bit and what you were saying but it seems like the songs tend to be based on kind of old songs and old stories and history and stuff which is great but it seems like people are kind of innovating a little bit around it now so like you combined you know the cash jig with the song and it obviously worked out really well and everything and you know you're seeing some other creators out there in the space and the industry who are kind of innovating around you know either a a going down to sort of like taking the old songs and adding a new twist to it or actually creating new songs themselves so yeah what's um what do you think's happening in the irish music space right now where do you think it's kind of going over the next few years and uh how are you going to be tackling it too are you thinking of doing any songwriting and stuff are you going to stick to like innovating around the uh you know the kind of the history space in in the songs yeah i think especially folk music uh, and irish folk music is actually here in ireland is just taken off completely especially after co i think after covid times and the lockdown um irish music has just seemed to hit a hit a an upward trajectory trajectory <laughs> so uh, i think it's really good that uh, especially i think in uh, in may i think it's the 25th of may there's a big festival here actually not too far from where i live now um in one of the football stadiums in in a place called oma and it's got the likes of myself um, the Tumbling Paddies are another massive Irish band here, the Whistling Donkeys, all folked up. Um, the likes of the High Kings is going to be there. I know you, you know the guys. So it's it seems to be folk music here in, in Ireland is just, it's just taken off, you know, and especially I think after COVID, people miss the 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 fun of Irish music. So I think it, it's kind of revitalised it all, and especially the young ones nowadays, um, I know before COVID, everyone was going to on their nights out, but they ended up nightclubs, disco music. But now the, the younger people are wanting to hear this 
Irish folk music. So it's it's um it's been great for us and uh, long may it last. Yeah, definitely. I think it's um yeah, it's it's a beautiful thing that you've got songs and you've got part of the culture that's made its way around the world. So you've got, you know, yeah. everyone able to experience a bit of a little bit of what Ireland's all about. And, you know, like, like they say uh, in, in the song that from the High Kings, wherever you go around the world, you'll find an Irish pub. And it's just beautiful how that culture has just found its place, especially in music. And it's great stuff, man. But anyway, so with regards to the show, um, obviously this podcast is, you know, it's an episode that I really wanted to have. I'm a big fan of the music. I love your creative work. But I also think that the stuff that you did on, you know, with the music video and stuff, it's all very high end professional stuff. And I want everyone who kind of listens in to take something away from this. And there's a lot of people on the business route, the entrepreneurship stuff, and a lot of people who kind of create audio content. I mean, that's what it's all about nowadays. It's really a lot of social media content creation stuff. And so what I wanted to ask really was, obviously, you've only got two songs up on Spotify from what I can see. It's Tiffin Up to Nancy and Mm -hmm. and you know, you have one that really hit well. Um, uh, Remind me of this, the name of the other song too, I- Island, what was it again? Island Time, yeah. Island Time, yeah, Island beautiful Time. song, downloaded yeah. it yesterday. Sorry, I couldn't remember the name then, but great song. <laughs> okay. Um, And it just seems like Tiffany Loves and Nancy just exploded. And I, I'm looking at it, I've seen creators, I know guys who have been in the space of country music and they've been putting stuff out there and they've had a few hits and stuff and they've been struggling recently. And I just find it really interesting. Like, how did you go about just, just give us some insights into like how you advertise the song. Why do you kind of think Spotify seemed to pick it up so well? And what were some of the creative marketing lessons that you can kind of share with other creators who are looking to make a big on the platform or, um, or you know, or get into the space at least initially and make a song take off? Yeah, I suppose at, at the time when we, took, when we brought out Tipping Up, Tipping it up to Nancy. Um, I know the, the other song that was on there is a song I wrote over COVID, The Island Town. Um, to be honest, at that time, I didn't know what I was doing. It was just a bit of fun in the in my house. I recorded it myself and put it up. It was just a bit of a something to do when over COVID. So um, to be honest, tipping it up to Nancy, I would always classify my first song as the other song. It was just a bit of fun. So um, tipping up to Nancy was the first one. Um, to be honest. It was pretty new to us as well at that time. Um, I'd never really been in a proper recording studio, so this was the first time we'd done that. Um, I headed off with Jonathan in the studio. Um, he really liked the, the style that I was going for as well. So he seemed to have a lot of fun in the recording end. Um, after that, I had I have a couple of friends in the music industry as well, a guy called Nathan Carter. Some of your listeners might have heard. A uh, guy no, from no. Liverpool, living here living here in Ireland, so a big country music artist. So um, I got a lot of advice off Nathan. Um, he put me in touch with the guy, um, the guy who does the, the video and called Shane. He's a, his company's called Cinematic Arcade. So um, he, we just, I just got a venue and decided to shoot the music video there. It, uh, we kept it pretty simple, but I just wanted it, as you say, um, it's, it's a pretty feel-good song. So I wanted that to come across in the video and... Everybody give loads of energy. There was lots of energy, so the video had to give the energy as well. So we got all my friends and family down, and they were the crowd. Um, to be honest, it's a really long day of shooting. You know, it's it's the same song over and over and over. Mm-hmm. So everybody had to keep keep up as if it was the first time they heard it. You know, so um, once we got that done, um, the song still wasn't out at the time, which which I wasn't sure at the time whether to to release the song and then record the the music video which a lot of people seem to do. Uh, but I, what I had realized since that, um, we recorded the music video before we actually released the song, which I could then use snippets of the video to promote the song, which I think really, really helped because people were excited. And then three weeks later, uh, after the song was out, we could bring out the, the full music video. Um, and I think that was that's what I'm going to do again this time. As I got everybody excited. You know, people like to watch something as they're listening as well, especially on Instagram stories, TikTok. Like TikTok's crazy big now. So um, that seems to be what, what got the ball rolling for tipping it up to Nancy um, over last, what was it now? Last, I think it was August last year, we were down in County Kerry in the bottom of Ireland. I was doing a gig down there and a friend of mine, his name is David Geeney. He'd be a 
multiple time World Irish Dancing Champion. Um, you think he was on Britain's Got Talent and you know, made it to the semi finals or something back in the cool. day. But um, I was gigging down in his venue and I asked him, could we shoot a bit of a, a promo video? And he, he was brilliant. You know, he could record the the noise of his feet. So, it, as you say, the, the audio was, was, I didn't want to just use a phone recording. You know, it had to be a proper good audio. So, uh, that seemed to really work. And my, my wife, Audia, has just taken over doing my management and social media and all that. She's great. She has loads of different ideas. So he just tells me what to do and I do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. No, you, you, you've clearly done so well. And it seems like you've kind of gone through this transition period then. So you had obviously the the gigs and you had the kind of the private work you were doing with kind of the weddings and everything. And then yeah. you've gone and you've released this song and it's gone so big. So in terms of like your trajectory into the future with the kind of the career and stuff, what what are you thinking of doing in terms of that? So are you thinking of kind of staying towards the, the gig routes and everything, or are you kind of going to go a little bit heavier in terms of like the, the Spotify sort of online music stuff? Um, yeah. What, what does the, uh, what does your kind of evolution of what you're doing in your career path look like to you right now? Do you think? Yeah. Well, at the minute, as I say, uh, my wife's helping now to take over the management. So she's, it's, it's great. It's not me going out looking for these bigger venues. At least I have somebody to do that for me. So I'll just, um, like, credit to her. She's got me into some big music venues for the rest of the year. It's only starting to kick off now this uh, straight after St. Patrick's Day. It, it seems to just take off. So um, as you said at the beginning, we're just back from America. We're in New York for St. Patrick's Day, um, playing some big gigs over there. And then I was just home for two days and off to Italy. So that seems to be the, we have some massive festivals then coming up um, over the summer. Um, we have a couple over in England as well. So they're all on the website, Um So that seems to be what I want to do is, is as my dad always says, I was gigging too much back in the day. So at least with, the, and with the help of Tipping Up to Nancy and the Spotify success, um, you have more of a, an opening into these bigger venues. They can see that you have an audience and a following so um they'll give you the chance and it seems to be going really really well at the moment um i had thought about putting a band together um as or people who don't know me i i, I play the guitar it'd be a little bit like an ed sheeran type thing i have the loop pedal so i'll record the guitar very short and then i can play the fiddle over the top or tin whistles or banjo and singing so it's, it's pretty lively and um when people think of traditional irish music they think of the old man in the corner playing proud <laughs> yeah. tunes and everybody drinking their Guinness. But this is proper, feel good, lively folk music. So, um, yeah, so that's that's the plan. And also then on the Spotify and on YouTube and TikTok, getting as much out there as, as, as much as I can. It all helps. So uh, I know uh, sometimes my, my little sister, Ellie, she's a, a singer. She asked me, should I put this video up? Should I should I not? I said, Ellie, put just put it up. You don't know what's gonna take off. Um, so just stick it up there. If it if it goes well, it goes well. If not, no harm done. <laughs> yeah, I feel you. And I think one message I really want to portray, at least the people listening in to and anyone who's kind of thinking of going down the music route or even just doing it for fun or something, is just that it's interesting seeing what's happened with music over the last like couple of years and stuff just I don't, I don't mean Irish music specifically but I mean in general where it seems like the whole AI generated stuff and the sort of computer generated things and these things that seem so like cheap in comparison to mm. traditional music done well it just seems like that's what's kind of taken over and it's really saturated the market quite a lot but it's really really nice and refreshing to see someone such as yourself who has made something that's like so so good it's such good quality it's such so authentic like from you and you're a creator who's kind of obviously just coming onto the the scene but then it's not like you've had what people tend to say that you need to go through in terms of the whole you got to go and do this for 10 years and make a song a month yeah. and eventually you might get 100 followers or something and that's obviously not what's happened here so it kind of makes me think hey you know what actually there's actually some hope for the people who want to make original quality from the soul music done really well and that they still do have a chance to go big on the platform so you know any creators kind of going into making a song or something and they're not seeing much success what would you kind of say to them in terms of 
um either consistency do you think it's consistency or do you think it's quality because your song's got the quality and it's done really well so would you say to them mm. go for the quality side of things or the consistency and like what would be your, your advice for them yeah i suppose a little bit of of both you know uh you do need quality there's no point in in, in doing a half a half ass job as we would say here mm-hmm. um just just sure it's, it's quality and and, and uh, well it's hard. It's hard to know. Like you, you could put up a video that you just took really quickly on your phone, and it, it uh, on TikTok, and, and it'll take off. But yet you spend all this money on a, a music video, and it might not. So as I say, it's just it probably is consistency. But make sure what you're doing is is good quality. Um, I, I, like I wouldn't put anything out now if 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 I didn't think it was good quality. Um, and I know from the last question as well, you know about what what am I doing? I'm I'm. Of one of my own songs, which is completely different to the the, the next two songs that I'm doing. I've um, a song I wrote for myself and my wife got married last September, so I wrote a song for for her from our wedding. So I plan to put that out, which is going to kind of flip the flip the whole thing. I don't really know what the plan is for that song, what the video looked like. But, um, but as I say, I think for for people or that are getting into the industry as well, it, and as you say, like. I've been working on this for a long, long time. I've been, as you said, I've been gigging since I was 10 years of age, but that's just because that's all I've ever done. You know, you could start out two years ago and still, you know, do well if, if you're if if you're committed to it and you're you're putting your time and effort into this. But just do as much as you can for um uh, and and put as much work into it as you can. You know what? It, it will it will work. Yeah, I love it, man. That that's great advice. And well, anyone who's kind of going into the uh into the music space nowadays they gotta uh they gotta start with yeah. some actual music right so um oh, last last question um just a bit of advice maybe some tips because i mean look man I, I in my own personal experience I'm not, I'm not a musician but i've played a bit of guitar and i've seen the effects yeah. and like the deep impact that playing a song on like a guitar that belonged to someone who's passed away for you know a loved one or something I've seen the effects I can have on people and even just like in your stuff, just seeing how many people it makes happy. And I, I, I'm i sure you do, but if you've ever gone through a, for a scroll or anyone else, if you want to go through a scroll through Sean's comments on the tipping and up to Nancy YouTube video, you see people and they're just like, yeah, I've just played this for two hours on loop and it's just brilliant. And people are so like, people are just loving it. And I think music's just such a great purveyor of positive emotions. And we just need a bit of, we just need a bit more of that out there in the world today and there's so much going on but in terms of music man um what's your uh what's your advice for starting out in music so picking that first instrument seeking a, a potential career further down the line um yeah any tips for um for seeing if you've got what it takes yeah i suppose for first for starting out especially for for, for young people or for or for parents or um or friends you know in my house the instruments were never left in the cases. They were always out. You know, the guitar was always in the corner. There was a, to be honest, actually, a, there was never a, a, a violin or a fiddle in our house. Um, my dad, a funny story, my dad was actually, he um, repairs music equipment and speakers. And back in them days, it was TVs and aerials and stuff. But um, he'd done a job for an old man. And he, the guy he was coming to lift the speaker. And he had no money to pay for it. So he, he says, I've got a fiddle here. If, if uh, Could I give you the fiddle as payment? So uh, that's how uh, the first violin or fiddle came into my house. At that time, it was a full-size fiddle, big one. And I was only seven years of age. So I couldn't actually even hold it properly. So but that, that, my dad always said that, make sure to always leave instruments out. Um, at the time, once you get to, once a, a young guy or a young, young person gets into their teenage years sometimes it, it cannot be cool if you're not playing the likes of a guitar or drums or bass or singing if you're playing something a wee bit different like a violin or i don't know a, a cello or a flute you know it can be seen as uncool but uh, a bit of advice would be it, it won't be uncool in four or five years time when you're out gigging and these people are coming to see you gigging at a at a show or a festival or and they see you up on the stage they'll not think it's it's uncool then so uh, that that'll be a big advice stick at it um also try and if, if uh, i was lucky that i had my dad who 
was gigging and playing music at the time so I could get out and do some gigs with him and you might get at that time I would get like a 20 pound every Saturday night when I was 10 years of age but if you can get a few a few quid for it when you're that age it can kind of keep you interested as well a little bit I think to be honest that's probably what kept me going in them teenage years as well um, but for, for somebody who doesn't have somebody like like I did um, get your friends together form a little band in school that will keep the, the interest there and um, yeah keep it going I love it man that's great advice and so we're kind of running to the end of the show now and the last thing that I, I like to ask people is just become a new show t- tradition and I've asked the last few people it and uh, I've got mixed answers and I think it's a really interesting question so here we go if uh, you found, you know, you went outside today or something and you found a young kind of 13, 14 year old Sean McGee running around the streets and you had a little chance to just whisper in his ear and give him some advice for what's coming ahead or whatever, uh, you know, whatever may come. What would you what would you tell a young you, man? Like what, what would be the, the message you'd want him to, to hear, if anything? Yeah, I suppose just... Um... Don't worry too much about um they just just, just kind of roll with the punches. Um it's not everything's gonna be good. <laughs> you know, there's there's gonna be bad times, especially when I'm gigging by myself. Um, you're gonna get some hard times, you're gonna get some really good times as well. So just roll with the with the waves, um, just keep going. And I suppose to me there was nothing else I could do other than play music. Um so I just had to keep keep going so um yeah just don't take life too serious um just go with it things will all fall into place and uh, everything happens for a reason so um yeah don't worry about it do you ever have doubts man i know i know i was kind of going to end the show there and stuff but I, i'd <clears> like to just dig in just a little bit more into what you just said there did you ever did you ever have doubts mm-hmm. about going down this career path or was there ever a moment or a time where you were kind of thinking am i doing the right thing here or what was the support like around it? Just yeah, was it was yeah. it always a smooth ride, or was it was it a real rocky one for you? No, I remember in, in university that's when I touched on it before. But I remember being um, it was the night before I was going to England for a gig, and I just remember thinking I have zero money here. Um, I remember ringing my mum. I was in halls in university, and I rang my mum crying, saying I have no money. She came up to Belfast from from our hometown. And um, I remember on the phone, she was saying, look, you don't have to go and do this gig. You know, just if you want to come home, I'll come up and get you and bring you home. And when she got to Belfast, uh, I was still crying two hours later. And uh, she says, uh, there's a hundred pounds. Um, Dad sent that up. And he said, and at the time, Dad says, honor your gig. You've taken the gig, so honor it. Go and do it. There's a hundred pounds. Just get it done. And uh, we'll work on this after. So, um. Yeah, there's been there's been loads of times like that, but um, I just think after that moment, and as and I thought that was a really good advice that my dad said as well. You know, honor you took the gig, honor the gig. I, you know, don't just bail out the day before when things get tough. Um, it's not always going to be easy. So um, I thought that was a, a good advice from my dad as well. And um, yeah, there's been a lot of hard times, but I suppose the more you get used to it and you know, you're i know what i'm doing now so i know things aren't going to always be smooth so you take the, the saying you take the smooth with the rough and um yeah just keep it going i love it man that's really good i'm, I'm glad i asked that it's a great great way to uh to round that off dude but um yeah so look that's been the uh the four questions for today man and before we wrap this up it is time for the shameless plug. So um, if anyone wants to get on board with the tour and see you in the UK for the UK listeners or yeah. for anyone over across the pond, I know we've got about half our listeners are uh, uh, based out in the States. I know you do some tour in there, so they're going to have to have a look sure. at that. But if anyone wants to just tune in to uh, uh, listen to some of the songs or follow you on social media, where uh, where do we go, man? Send our send our people to, uh, to, the, to the shameless plug points. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so all the, the good spot. It's, uh, so if you want to check me out on social media, it's Sean McGee Music. Um, second name is spelled M-A-G-E-E. So Sean McGee Music for all social media. And um, all the gig links and the rest of it are all on seanmcgeemusic.com. So I'm um, really looking forward to the summer coming in. We have loads of festivals um, all over England, Ireland. 
We'll be hopefully back in the States before the end of the year. We're working on some things. If not, we'll see you back in New York for St. Patrick's Day next year. Um, so yeah, keep your eyes peeled. And for the new song, it's coming out very soon as well. And uh, I'll give you a sneak peek of the name of the new song. It's called The Bally Connell Fair, which is, uh, I think it's actually the first song I ever learned as a child with my brother and sister. So uh, it's a revamp and a really good summer theme tune. So I hope you enjoy it. Oh man, that's great. A uh, a song, a song with history as well. That that one, those ones, uh, they always mean the most. But yeah, dude, we uh, yeah. we got a, we got a link up in uh, in summer when you're down here in in the UK in the wheel. Uh, and I got to go see some some live music. It'd be great, dude. But yeah, man, thank you so much for joining me today for the Talk Four podcast. Absolute pleasure to have you on, bro. It's been a it's been a fun one. Thank you very much. I was nervous at the very start, as I say, my first ever podcast. So thank you very much. Thank you for having me as well. <laughs> oh man, no, you did great. You're um, you're all set. You have the uh, the talk for seal of approval to go forward to more podcasts and do a great job because you're ace, dude. Um, and yeah, look, Thank guys, you. thanks for listening. This has been episode 109. And if you'd like to listen to the past episodes, go and have a look at the channel. And if you'd like to listen in for the future ones too, make sure to hit the subscribe button and spread some love by leaving a like and a comment. Signing off for now. Fights on, and see you next time. Good night.